Okay, so this is my first um, Facebook live video. Uh, essentially, um, I've, as you may all know, those of you who follow me on Facebook or who check out my posts, I tend to post a lot of stuff about parenting and um, kids, raising kids and all that kind of stuff. Uh, because it's it's a, it's a passion of mine. I, I read a lot about it. I'm a parent myself. So I like to share um, share some of the experiences that I go through as a parent. I've got two daughters, a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. And uh, today I shared something on um, active listening uh, for children, for kids. And uh, I've had quite a lot of personal WhatsApp comments and Facebook messages about that particular uh, topic that I shared. And uh, a lot of those comments were people asking me to um, set up a separate parenting Facebook page or do some sort of Facebook live um, uh, talk uh, on it. So I figured uh, why not, I'll just do a quick one um, today for the first uh, first time. So, essentially, as uh, parents, it's important that we um, we inculcate in our kids certain uh, values, uh, certain behaviors, certain characters, because these are the kids that are going to take over our pensions and our investment funds and all that kind of stuff uh, in the future. So if we don't bring them up right now, uh, it's not going to bode well for us when we're old and we're having to deal with these kids in our adulthood. Uh, as doctors in healthcare or nurses in healthcare or bus drivers or taxi drivers or pension fund uh, managers, etc. So it's important as parents that we uh, raise up our, our, our kids uh, correctly. That means um, sharing uh, experiences that we have um, with our own kids to other people. I like um, university, our careers that we go on various training programs for parenting, which for me is the most important job on this earth. We don't really tend to go training on it. There are no books on it uh, that we uh, are forced to read. There's no exams on it that test us uh, to prove whether we are fit to be parents or not, whether we're doing the right thing. So we tend to have to um, find our way when we're parenting, you know, a bit of trial and error, a bit of passing down what our parents did to us. If we're fortunate enough to uh, read a book, then we, we learn from the book. If we're fortunate enough to uh, hear from friends what's happening with them, then we, we learn. But essentially, parenting is not something that we're taught. Uh, so I just feel that it's, it's important that I share some of the stuff that I've been uh, I've been learning uh, some of the stuff I've been um, doing. So the reason why I did active listening today with my kids is because my daughter, uh, the uh, youngest one, Nakwaka, came up to me one day and said, um, Daddy, my uh, teachers told me that um, I don't listen. I don't know how to listen. And that in class, when um, teachers talking, I always like to talk. Uh, so I said, uh, OK, so. What do you want me to do? So she said, oh, daddy, so teach me um, how to listen. So I thought, hmm, OK. Uh, it's quite impressive that you're asking me to come and teach you how to listen. So I thought, OK, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you how to listen. Let's, let's, let's do a, a bit of a daddy-daughter talk on listening. So yesterday we went, no, not yesterday. Yeah, yesterday we went for. Um, the parents there at school where we go through their books and the teachers tell us about their characters and how they're performing and all that kind of stuff. So we went for it and the teachers brought up this thing again about listening because she likes to talk. And she mostly likes uh, to dictate what people uh, do because she's got quite a strong uh, personality. So I told the teacher that, okay, thanks for letting me know. She's actually mentioned it before. So it's something that we'll probably have to work on over the, uh, the holidays. So today I decided, okay, let's do listening. So essentially, the first points I wanted to drive across to them 
um, it's good for us parents to drive across to our kids is that most of the conflicts that arise probably and i don't want to quote statistics because i haven't done any data analysis but i'd say majority of the conflicts that arrive arise when we're older is because of the fact that we haven't been taught how to listen um, so we don't understand or appreciate uh, that listening is actually uh, a task that has certain principles and ways to it that we have to follow uh, so when we get married and stuff you know we have fights where we're working working relationships we have fights etc we can't manage that conflict because we haven't been taught how to listen so essentially what i told them what the first thing is that if we learn how to listen we tend to drive down conflict so we can make better better friends at school they can uh you know play with their siblings better uh, respect their parents better if they learn how to um, how to listen so what i did and what i advise uh, parents are that to do they've got more than one sibling they should actually ask them what they think the definition of listening is so i asked my oldest daughter what she thought the definition of listening was and she said oh yeah listening is um, hearing yeah hi Akumia. listening is um hearing someone speaking and uh, focusing and, and giving them attention and then my second daughter said well listening is uh using your five senses so straight away um i told them that look as you can see both of you have got two different ideas when it comes uh, to listening one person thinks listening is about using just your ears and hearing and then giving someone attention. She doesn't say what the attention is or what it means. Um, the other person says it's using your whole five senses. So if, for example, one person is speaking to the other other, other sister and um, isn't giving attention, the other sister will get upset because for her, giving attention is part of listening. However, if the other sister is talking to the other one, who wants you to use all your five senses and you decide just to uh, look at her and listen to her but not actually feel what she's saying um, in your heart or give her an understanding from your mind or your mouth that you understand what she's saying then for her you may start conflict so the first thing i wanted them to understand was the fact that everyone has their own perception of what listening is and that in itself can cause uh, conflict mm -hmm because the moment you have your own perception of what listening is you start to approach the way you listen to people from your own perspective because you don't really care about what the other person thinks about listening uh, so they went oh okay yeah yeah that's true okay okay so then they started giving instances of school where they've had fights with people because they were talking to a friend and the friend was looking away and not giving them eye contact um, or they wanted to hold the friend's hand while they're talking because the friend is close with them and the friend didn't want to hold their hand so i was saying yeah that's because people have a different perception of of, of listening some people are touchy feely um, you know wanting to actually um, feel what they're saying some people you know just want to listen with their ears don't really want to give eye contact it's a very Ghanaian thing we're taught to not give people eye contact we look down at the ground all that kind of stuff we never give eye contact so I then said, well, it's good that you both got your own perceptions of listening, but listening is something that's actually meant to be taught. So that means that there are actually systems uh, to listening. So we decided to have a look at what the actual definition of uh, active uh, listening uh, is. And the definition of active listening was the fact that um, listening is basically just how you respond to the environment around you the kind of feedback that you get and give to the environment around you. So the way human beings respond to the environment around them is through their five senses. Um, you know, they look at things, uh, they feel things, they smell things, they touch things, um, they perceive things with their mind, they feel things with their, with, with, with their heart, etc. So when we're teaching our kids about listening, about active listening is for them to understand that it's not just about you know talking on with your ears and hearing what's going on it's about actually um, giving the environment or the person who's um, talking uh, or communicating rather the full attention uh, with all the senses uh, 
that you have you know, the whole body um, listening so there was a um, infographic uh, then that I found which was for kids which actually showed that so it had um, a picture of the eyes um, had a picture of the mouth the ears the hands the feet the body the brain and then the heart and these are the concepts or systems that we use when we're listening so for example when someone is uh, talking to you you need to give them eye contact because that shows that you're connecting with the person and appreciating what they're they're saying uh, you also need to give them eye contact because when someone is talking or communicating it's not just about what the person is saying it's about the expressions uh, that the person is giving the kind of body language that the person is also giving and that can also add more depth and meaning to um, what the person is saying or trying to communicate. So we did a little role play uh, on that, pretending that we're in the playground and someone has come and taken your your friend away and you're angry or trying to express your anger to the person. You can express your anger with just your voice, but if you really want to be serious and let them see how angry you are, you know, you can squeeze your face as well as raise your voice. And that adds a more bigger dimension to the communication. So we played a bit on listening with, <coughs> sorry, not just the, um, the ears, but with the, with, the, with the eyes. And then you then look at listening with the ears, where you then look at the pitch of the voice, the tone of the voice, uh, and how that then adds also depth and meaning to, to what the person is trying to communicate. So we did a little role play on that as well. Then... We then went into the, the mouth, the fact that when someone is listening, uh, it's important that whilst you're giving them your attention, which is your eye contact, and then um, listening with both ears, which is why you give them eye contact, because your ears are like that. If you start turning to the side, you're using only half, half of your, your, your full hearing potential. Um, it's also important then to also actually keep quiet whilst the person is talking. And that, again, is a kind of Ghanaian trait. And you can see clearly that the parenting, when it comes to Ghana, we're not teaching our kids the right thing because the, we grow up to be adults. And when you look at the way adults communicate with each other in Ghana, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, people are talking over each other. No one's listening to anyone. You listen, you, you, you open a radio, the same thing happening. Politicians doing the same thing. You go on TV, it's the same thing. You go out on the street, everyone's shouting over each other. No one is actually listening. Everyone is wanting to express their opinion, but no one's actually wanting to listen and actually understand what's going on. In order to express a better uh, opinion. So we spoke at length about the fact that they need to restrain themselves in order to be able to listen. So that then brings in another component of actual active listening. And there are two components. The first component is you actually expressing and communicating yourself through sound with your mouth through visuals with the way your body languages the way your hand gestures are etc but then there's a second uh, aspect to listening which is you actually restraining yourself so there's a self-control aspect to listening and this is where i think we as parents are letting our children down we're not teaching them that self-control that self-discipline that self-awareness part of listening where they actually have to be conscious of the fact that hey look i need to restrain myself and not talk and you know i need to restrain myself and not second guess what this girl or boy is actually telling me you know i need to restrain myself and not try and answer a question when teacher is talking because i think i know it. you know so this is the second part of uh, active listening that we need to really get serious with when we're teaching uh, our kids the ability to actually restrain themselves you know to step aside and actually look at themselves and say okay i know I want to speak but someone else is speaking so i need to keep quiet and give that person my whole and divided attention when the person finishes talking and i've processed what the person has said i've heard it i want to stood the tone the pitch I want to, i've looked at the body language etc then i can process it properly and respond so i think it's something that we need to uh, teach our uh, kids a bit more the ability to restrain ourselves and typically when the kids are really young and they're throwing tantrums and that kind of stuff, that is them actually uh, telling us that, look, dad, mom, you know, help me to actually control this part of active listening, this part of communication. You know, there's something I want to say, but 
I can't restrain myself, so I'm gonna kick and shout and throw my body around and all that kind of stuff. So it's up to us parents. It's up to us parents to um, actually help them to be able to restrain themselves and building that self control. So that was the mouth part of it. And then we then looked also at the um, hand, the feet uh, part of it, where typically with kids, you know, they stomp their feet, their hands are all over the place when they're talking. Again, it's all about the self restraint and self uh, control. You know, putting your hand. I know when we were younger, we used to be told, put your hand behind your back when you're speaking to an adult. I mean, this this is what they were telling us. It was about self control, it was about showing a level of restraint and giving the person. Uh, full attention it was about giving body gestures that actually are respectful, you know, uh, not just you know letting yourself go and throw your hands all over the place and daddy, I want this and no, 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 no. There's a different way in which you can teach the kid to communicate that they want something and they want it urgently without them throwing tantrums and stomping their feet and throwing their hands all over the place. If you don't teach them these things when they're young to restrain themselves. You know, these guys are gonna become the next politicians or presidents and they'll start messing about and it will be our fault because we as parents haven't actually taught them how to listen and how to communicate properly, how to restrain themselves, how to speak properly, how to moderate their voice, how to give eye contact. Um, then we did a bit about body language and you know, the kind of typical things Ghanaians do with our, with our body language, the, mm. the speaking of the face and the, putting a hand on the hips and all that kind of stuff, the kind of typical things that Ghanaians do, especially uh, the girls, because um, I've got daughters, so we did a bit of role play and the typical things girls do um, with their bodies, all the kind of Americanized girl, girl that kind of nonsense that, foreign nonsense that we're, 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 we're picking up. So we did something on body language as well, so that they understand that they need to be aware of themselves when they're communicating. It's not just about them blurting out uh, sound, but they need to be aware that every facet of their body is actually communicating uh, a message. So they need to control that and regulate that so that they communicate the message properly. We then went to the brain aspect and the heart aspect. So the brain aspect was um, them actually, again, self controlled restraining themselves and thinking about what they want to say before they say it. Now, for a child, that's quite difficult. I, I do a lot of Sunday school teaching, so I'm exposed to children uh, on a weekly basis. And you can see with the kids, when we ask them a question, most times they won't even want to put their hand up. They just want to blurt it out because, you know, the, the connection between the brain and the mouth is about one millimeter distance. Whereas what you want to do is to try and prolong it for a bit so that you can process before you actually... Um, open your mouth and talk. So I was telling them that uh, in the classroom, for example, when the teacher is speaking um, and the teacher wants someone to answer a question, the teacher usually tells them that they should put up their hand before they answer. And the reason why the teacher does that is because the teacher is trying to get them to learn how to take that time, control the th the themselves, control their thought processes, pause, understand what's being said, reflect on it, think about it, analyze it, and then give a response. So these kind of drills that the teachers are giving their kids uh, in class is actually trying to teach them how to restrain themselves and control themselves. Maybe the teachers haven't told them a lot. I'm telling you to put your hand up because I want you to actually think about what you're saying before you say it. And I want you to understand that you need to let me finish talking before you put your hand up and then say it. So it's important that we're also at home. We allow these kind of drills to uh, continue. You know, don't don't let don't let the school system be the school system. And then when they come home, you know, they can do whatever they want. What they're being taught at school should also reflect uh, what goes on in the house. And what goes on in the house should also reflect uh, what's being taught uh, in school. And then after the um, brain part, we then went to the heart, and the heart part was basically. Uh, feeling what the person is saying. So putting yourself in the person's shoes, showing a bit of empathy, having that kind of fifth sense to be able to feel what the person is, is saying. So we then did drills on uh, tone of voice, for example, where I said one thing in a particular tone and then said it in another tone. And then they were then meant to try and understand whether what I was saying was sad or happy. 
So I said something that was sad in a happy tone and then said it again in a sad tone. And then they went, oh, well, no, what you're saying is sad. So even though you said it in a happy tone, it kind of felt weird. And I said, yes, that's the whole point. You're meant to feel um, as well what the person is, is saying. And that's where you build uh, empathy. Uh, that's where you build uh, uh, relationships. That's where you build things like trust. Um, it's when you engage the feeling part of uh, your communication um, skill set. Um, so, yeah, these are the kind of things that I uh, took uh, the kids, the kids, um, the kids through. And uh, I encourage uh, parents, parents out there, to um, do same, do same with, do same with the. Um, with the uh, the kids active active listening is something that we need to get the kids to be constantly practicing if they make a mistake we need to uh, correct them if their body language is out of order we need to correct them if their tone of voice is out of order we need to correct them so typical example is where you have a kid gets up says good morning or let's say that the husband or wife gets up they say good morning to the kids whilst walking away to, towards the kitchen you don't do things like that what you're doing is teaching the kids a uh, very poor aspect of communicating. You want to say good morning to someone, go up to them, face them, let them see you, give them the eye contact, say good morning, get the feedback of good morning back and go on. Don't walk past them as you're going and mumble good morning. You know, when we do things like that, we're showing uh, the kids some bad, uh, bad examples. When parents, uh, we have arguments, for example, in front of the kids, Again, we're showing the kids a bad example of how we how we communicate and deal with uh, uh, conflict and how we uh, uh, practice uh, active active listening. So yeah, I encourage um, all the parents out there to please practice active listening with your kids and get them to correct themselves and get them to correct themselves to the point where when you are messing up with the active listening and you're having a bad day, they can also have the confidence to also come up and, uh, and also uh, correct you. Right, so that's the end of my little share for today. Um, I may do uh, more shares in the future, I don't know. But I did this one because I was getting a lot of messages that, oh, can you come and say something about this active listening? So to those who um, were requesting, hopefully, you're here watching. If you're not, you can come and watch uh, later on. I think the video stays off about 48 hours or something. Um, yeah, so keep parenting. Keep up the work. We're all building the next uh, presidents and leaders of this country. Those of you who are building the next armed robbers and rapists, stop it. Sort yourselves out and do the right thing and parent your kids properly. All right, I'm out. Peace. Have a good uh, weekend. Bye.